Okay, it's been um, some time since we shot the last scene. I went ahead and soldered in another uh, low value capacitor and I ran the thing until I think uh, I messed that capacitor up. I think I definitely have proven Bob's theory that yes, this does require a low value capacitor. So with that thought and knowing that what I've tried so far has not worked outside of the uh, fixed value capacitors. I went back on um, the Ebays of the world and I bought a another one. This one is rated 5 to 50 picofarad. Now the fins on these are, as you see, not as plentiful as the old one and they're a little bit more gapped um, than the old one. Which is uh, right here. So, so this is the old one. This is replacement number three. It's really hard to tell when you're looking at a picture just exactly the comparison of the gap. Now I knew lengthwise they weren't one and the same, but I'm hoping that this works and the air gap won't matter too much. That was something also that Bob brought up was that the air gaps and the fin size and all that good stuff can be problematic. So. I'm almost at a point where if this does not work this time, I'm just going to put a fixed capacitor in here, a high voltage fixed capacitor, and uh, wish it the fondest adieu. Um, these things can be expensive. And I've already put the first one back up, I do believe. No, I did not. So this is the first one I bought, second one I bought, and between these two, between these two, I paid almost what I paid for the amplifier. Let's go ahead and tear this apart and put this in and it should work because I've had that one in. So. Yeah, I like this one because this one's got the nut on it and it don't have the two screw holes, although I don't mind the two screw holes. This one here just, you know, you get a really good solid connection on this one. So, what we need to do is take that off. Move all of this out of the way. I've got, uh, I got to plug in the little soldering iron. That's how little it is. That's crazy little. And uh, get that warming up because that's going to take a few minutes. This thing's going to start to vibrate and make some some noise. But I also have the little one uh, warming up. Twice the size. Let's uh, give that a moment to warm up. Let's see what we need to do. I don't have a pointy thing, so we'll have to use a finger. 
Trying to be really careful about these front switches. Okay, so here is our work site right here. And I apologize, I don't have anything to point with other than my finger. Tragic, I know. Um, Alright, so right here is the capacitor that I put in, the fixed capacitor. We need to connect it between this coil and ground. You can see I had uh, two points for ground right now. Uh, this one right here is the original ground. When I put in the uh, first air capacitor, I moved it back here. But I've since put in another grounding point. Um, this ground here is really thick wire and um, I don't want to keep manipulating it and rip off the uh, copper mask on the board. I've already done that to that one back there. So that is what we're trying to achieve um, and then need to get that mounted. I think this ground tie point right here I'm going to need to try to uh, move this to the side and playing with these I found that yes you can you see down here at the base where it's got um, the piece of metal going over the, the shaft, the very last one. Take a screwdriver and you could bend those up and by doing that then you can spin these around and land them into the next notch. And you see those two little bumps right there? That's where the tab needs to fall in between there and uh, should have some corresponding bumps on the other side, little tabs, which you can see right here, where that is falling in, in line. So, I guess now is a good time for me to get a pointed device called a screwdriver, and let's move those. And I'm not too sure how well we're going to be able to do this online. That's a ham radio playing in the background. That wasn't too hard, was it? I know it's a little challenging for you to see, but we we definitely got it locked in. Now this one here is a little tarnished. So I want to clean that up before doing that, uh, before soldering. So to do that, what we're going to do we're going to take a fiberglass brush and then we're going to hit that. If uh, you never had one of these brushes, 
they're definitely worth their weight in gold for a lot of things like this. Just got to be careful because you can lose the bristles off of these and they do fall off. And uh, they will land on your bench and end up in your finger or somewhere in your hand. But you see how well that cleaned that up. Perfect. Just like brand new. All right, so now I need to pull the little cap out of line. Probably want to unplug this before I start working on that. But it could be a little dangerous. You see, I got this plugged into a power strip that the uh, soldering iron's plugged into, the big one. Uh, so generally when I'm working on this, I'll leave it plugged in and I just hit the kill switch over there and then I'm, I'm safe. But uh, I forgot. All right, I can confirm we are off. So next thing we want to do is get a pair of plurs. And again, I do apologize for the uh, horrible uh, angles on the camera. Um, it's the best I could do. I can go shaky cam, I reckon. But that probably wouldn't do any good anyway. So I'm going to remove the little cap. Let's, let's try this behemoth. And right away we see a problem. I'm in your way. There is the cap that I had on there. All right, so now um, let's finagle this on. But first, I think I'm going to go ahead. Oops, you can't see. I'm going to tin these before putting them in, I think. Probably not. have to remove this ground.
how to hook this coil where it's not in the way. And again, I do apologize for my hands being in your way, but I hope you understand. I need to be in here. that now I got to come back out because I got to swing the ground tab to the other side tag and it So it's on this side now. These are going to be up in the air. Well, that was great difficulty trying to get my nut on. I need to get a tool. All right, so now let's uh, weld those tabs on. The uh, body shifted on me, but I think we'll probably be okay maybe.
Eh, maybe not. Let's see here. Yep. We can do it with that ground. Trying to put a mechanical crimp on that. Okay. Hmm. Not quite. Have to be careful of the cord going across the big one. I think we did it. Give it the old tug test. Yep. Okay. Now, the big one. The big guy. Which gonna have to loosen that up because if I don't then I'm gonna have to um, bend the coil and that's not good I'm not sure what that would uh, do to our frequency that throw our resonant frequency off or not. Got my tool stuck again. I like this tool, but Man, so I've only used it a few times. Yeah, it seems to work for what it does.
I'm regretting not uh, tinning like I thought I was uh, I should have. Now, I mean, I'll get it. We will definitely get it. So let me see if I could uh, pre tin in this odd angle. Okay. I think I achieved the goal. Still not too happy with it, but. It's better. Let me kill the big iron. Put the knob on this and see how that turns. I've got uh, a spot of solder that fell on the board, so I'll need to clean this out. Okay, it does turn. And nothing hits. See that big blob of solder right there? That, uh, that I keep pushing out of the way. There we go. You can see it. Alrighty, let me clean this up. Move the big iron out to the garage so it can cool down properly. Get this all hooked up and then we'll test it and we'll see what happens. Okay, got the bench cleaned up a little bit. The case just sitting on there. Got the meter in line, radio in line, microphone, and an ampler, ampler amplifier in line. Uh, we're using a Browning LTD uh, for the radio, a Turner Plus 3 for the microphone, uh, realistic three-way meters for the meters, and Chinese uh, Chinesium amplifier. And uh, got that plugged into power. Off, off. Let's go ahead and turn everything on, let things start warming up. We'll throw power to the amplifier, get this going. I'd like to give this, you know, at least uh, 30 seconds to a minute warm up time. I've done, I've done a lot less than that, let me tell you. Sometimes when uh, I'm just sitting monitoring and the DX is rolling in, it's like, ah, can't wait to spike the mic. And uh, I don't give the uh, amplifier proper warm-up time. I keep forgetting it's not solid state. Let's turn the radio on. That solid state, it don't need warm-up time. While we're waiting for that to warm up, let's take a spin around the dial. Super Bowl is really where our activity is going to be. Uh, DX today has been kind of dead. This is only a 23 channel, so we ain't got that many channels to check out.
All right, so I just put the radio on channel 11. That should be good enough warm up there. Now, one other thing that you're not seeing off screen is I do have a antenna tuner. The antenna tuner, you may hear clunk, clunk as it's trying to tune up the antenna. And that's going to keep my SWRs flat. We may see uh, movement up here on the SWR meter. The antenna tuner will also give me a digital uh, tell of what these are telling me. So yes, I know that these are not exactly uh, awesome meters, uh, but it does give you a tells you you know a story that otherwise you not have if you didn't have them. But the uh, antenna tuner will tell me everything that this will digitally. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Now I'm in uh, one position, the the bottom I can go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, audio. All right, so it looks like maybe you know, just about three watts. What the radio's doing? See, we got good audio. Let me uh, uh, calibrate. All right. Turn down the gain on the mic some. Audio. 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 Let's see if we could tune this up some. Don't think it's going to work. Oh, it, it would help if I put the amplifier in operate mode. Let's try that again now, shall we? This radio, according to the uh, antenna tuner, is only putting out about 3.2 watts. Oh, look at that. That time, it worked. So I just put this meter in the 500 watt scale. It's saying that we're putting out 100 watts. Audio. I hit the uh, antenna tuner and uh, that brought our SWRs down flat and according to that we're at 33 watts the amplifier is working we're at low power microphone gain is all the way down audio audio Audio, audio, uh, audio, 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 uh. 
audio uh, okay we got a contact issue in the microphone uh, 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 audio test one two uh, audio uh, audio I don't even have the microphone aimed at me uh, audio uh, audio uh, audio uh, audio about 83 watts according to the antenna tuner let's see what uh, the next I ain't even tuned this up gosh let's try tuning it up According to that, 150 watts. And according to the antenna tuner, 100 watts. And we're still in low position. Wow. Big time, big strapper. Audio. Number two position. Wow. 200 watts on that. The antenna tuner saying about 155. Audio. Audio. I'm going to say at this point in time, this is working. Let me, uh, since you guys already know what this is all about, let me bump you in closer to this. So here we are, back on number one position. Audio. And now that, uh, the antenna tuner was saying 110 watts on that one. Number two position, 145 watts, according to the uh, antenna tuner. Audio, audio. Yeah, 152 watts. Let's go to number three. That's the same. Hundred and sixty three watts. About a hundred and sixty five watts. And now number four position. Still saying the same, 163 watts. Hundred and sixty-nine watts. Hundred and seventy two, four, seven, hundred and eighty, a hundred and ninety, one hundred and ninety five.
Oops, I'm sorry, I misread that. It's 190. Yeah, about 190 watts with 3.2 watts input audio. Now, let's see if we can get a reading off a sideband. That's not bad. I, I'm really impressed. Uh, 192 watts. 100, and... Uh, <laughs> So, so far I'm pleased, I'm very happy that that's working. So at this point, I'm going to leave that control in place. Let's see what sideband does. Let's go to lower side. And we're just gonna do number four. Ah, let's do number one. First, The amplifier turned uh, off, so we're bypassing. We're just going to do the radio. Uh, let me put this back into AM. See, that's saying about 4 watts. And the antenna tuner is saying 3.2 watts. Let's go to sideband. Audio, uh, audio, uh, audio. That's saying about 11 watts, and I'm still the same distance from the uh, radio uh, as I have been during this entire test. And the mic gain is only at about one and a half bumps up, uh, almost at the. Um, almost at the uh, 45 position or the uh, 9 o'clock position however you want to word it the uh, antenna tuner audio uh, saying about 5.3 watts uh, about 5.9 watts. So the radio is not doing the four watts on uh, yeah the four watts on AM and the 12 watts on sideband. We're we're way under. So working with that, let's see what happens. So got the amp on sideband. We're gonna turn this on operate. This is on the 50 watt scale. We're on number one. Microphone's back in its position where it was. Mic gain still at just below 9 o'clock. Audio. So we, we're pegging that. This, again, was on the 50. I just bumped it up to the 500. It's another reason why I got this meter. I mean, yeah, it's nice. All this stuff. I've ran... Not this particular meter. I've had this a while. I bought this out of somebody's junk bin, but I've ran these meters probably since the 70s. I've had a bunch of them and always go back to them. They're nice meters. This one needs a little love or just get a whole new better one. I don't know. All right, so let's see what the uh, antenna tuner says. Uh... So that peaked up to about a hundred. Uh, now, with me about arm, what about two feet away, my head turned away from the microphone. I was getting uh, sixty some odd watts. Let's go to number two. Audio. Ah, ah, ah. So that's about 150, swinging at 200 watts. Audio. Uh, uh, uh. About 110, my head turned and looking at the meter. Uh, 
ありよあありよあーあー So that was about 200 swing into 500あありよあありよあありよあありよ110 to 130 again head turned about two feet away might gain barely up you know audio 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 so about the same two swinging to five six hundred audio 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 so about a hundred ish swinging about 170 ish So let's bring this a little closer. Audio, audio, ah, ah, ah. It's about the same. Audio, audio, audio. Hundred and ten with the audio and gives me about a hundred and seventy. So it's awesome. Awesome possum sauce. That's all I could say. Definitely working. And for those wondering what this is, I do believe this is my great current meter. I couldn't begin to tell you if uh, the amperage draw is correct. Audio, audio, but you know, I guess that's pretty good. And you see right here off screen behind this, behind this amplifier. Yes, oops. A new toy, two meter amplifier. Um, behind that meter, that's my uh, antenna tuner. And so that's what I'm bending over to, to read that tiny display. 3.2 watts in to give me a couple hundred watts out, I think is really good. Uh, can't wait to actually put this behind my HF rig and start working some 10 meters with it. I could have last night. But uh, wasn't working. Thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, series. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm happy that we got something working, and uh, and uh, now it's time to tear up the airwaves. Catch you guys later. Seven threes. See you in the next one. This is Worldwide Ltd. by Browning signing clear. See ya. Hey Super Bowl, say hello to YouTube. Say hello to YouTube. You're going to be a star. That's right. We are making a YouTube video. Say hello to the YouTubes and be a superstar. Worldwide, LTD by Browning.
Yeah. 